In this video, I am going to explain how to write Verilog code for SR flip-flop UDP. As I mentioned in the tutorial 31, the similar approach that is it will start with the keyword primitive and it will end with end primitive and you can use table and end table and you can define the behavior that you want to get from this SR UDP. So the pins are clock, Q pin, Q will be my output and my S, R and clock pins are my inputs. So I am declaring my output as reg type. So output Q and reg Q. Here itself you can write output reg Q. It's up to you. And my inputs are clock pin S yes, and R. Now in the table I am writing and the positive transition of clock. If my SR inputs are 0, 0, then I should get the behavior of memory. So if my present state is 0, then my next state also should be 0. If my present state is 1, then my next state also should be 1. So these two lines of code indicates that and the raising edge of clock transition happening if my sr inputs are 0 0 then it should be in the case of memory and at the raising edge of clock if my sr inputs are 0 1 then irrespective of my present state my output should be 0 i mean the next state should be 0 and similarly if my sr are 1 0 then irrespective of my present state the next state should be 1 and if my inputs are 1 1 at the raising edge of clock it is indeterminate behavior and at the falling edge of clock or the falling transition of clock it should not change anything for any inputs it should not change anything it should remain in the same state as it is so this is how you can write the primitive of sr flip flop now simply you should instantiate the primitive that you are using so in the sr udp code i am writing q will be my output clock pin s and r pins are my inputs so output q input clock and s and r and this name should be written as it is. So, SRFF UDP. So, SR flip-flop UDP as it is. And the order of the pins should be in the same way. Because I am using here in the order uh, instead of reference. That is, if you are using dot operator, then you can write in either of the order. There are two ways of writing those things as I stated in my earlier tutorial. So, here I am using the same order that is Q, clock, S and R. So, this is how you can write the code for SR flip flop UDP and the test bench will be similar where I try to cover all the possible cases. You can uh, check this. Initially, my clock is 0, S and R are also 0. For every one time step, my clock is being inverted, which indicates that the time period of my clock is 2 units and after 2 units, uh, my S and R is changing to 0, 1 plus 1. That means after 3 units, it's changing to 1, 0. So, all cases I have written here. Now, let's check the uh, behavior of this the timing waveforms of the code that we have written how it would be and whether the sr flip flop functionality is being achieved or not we can check in the timing waveform yeah let's elaborate this and check see here at the passage of clock initially my sr is 0 0 so here it is don't care so the, in the same memory state it's again showing don't care in the next passage of clock, you can see here my SR is 1, 0. So, irrespective of my previous state or present state, it should change to 1. Q is becoming 1. And at the next passage of clock, my S is 0, R is 0. So, it is memory case. So, it is retaining the same value. And in the next passage of clock, my S is 0, R is 1. So, output is becoming 0. Similarly, you can check for any case uh, throughout the code. Here, you can see my SR is 1, 1. So, output is don't care like that. So, in this manner, you can create your own primitives in the Verilog and you can instantiate that primitives to get the uh, desired behavior that you are intended to design. Hope you guys learned something new in this video. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.